Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Meta Report. This one's going to be a little special. It's going to be looking at the Vision Meta in the current patch, which is 7.23F. I've been wanting to make a sort of warding guide in the current patch, but it's taken me some time and a lot of games to sort of figure out what might be good wards and how to ward effectively in the current patch with the current setup of the jungles and the high grounds and that sort of stuff. And we're going to be looking at a couple examples of Puppy, who I believe is one of the most creative and prolific and just experienced warders in the entire game. I really, really like how he approaches warding. And then I will go into a demo lobby and show a bunch of spots that I think are good from my own experience and from a lot of the games that I have watched. So right off the bat, this is not a Puppy specific thing, but the first ward of the game is always going to go to the mid laner in the current patch and generally speaking it should be covering one of the rune spots now that they're both so close it doesn't really matter whether you pick the top or the bottom they're both pretty easy to get to but as you can see both of the mid laners nisha and moon from fanatic have a ward covering the rune this also covers a potential rotation from a support from the side lane um, I really like this one in particular on the Radiant side because a lot of times the support will rotate through the jungle instead of walking through the river. But it doesn't matter in this case because you're going to be able to see them coming through the river or through the jungle. So during the nighttime I think is when warding gets a lot more interesting and especially as the lanes start to break down whether it's day or night warding gets a lot more interesting because towers are falling people are moving around the map and it's really important to keep track of what's going on all over the map so we see that puppy just places a sentry first to see if there's a ward there he pops up this observer ward which is still a good ward just because no towers have fallen so the laning stage is relatively static Nisha wants to be farming in his jungle, just hitting all these camps as much as possible with Empower, not really playing the lane, and so he, this ward is really good at spotting rotations to invade the jungle. It also is going to keep track of these power runes, which are going to enable potentially the OD to gank bottom, so lots of information coming out from this ward right here. So here's another really awesome use of warding, which is that as your towers start to fall one of the great things that towers provide you is this little blob of vision out on the map of course a ward doesn't provide quite the same safety as the tower does but placing a ward in an area where a tower just fell whether you denied it or whether it was pushed kind of gives you the same semblance of control over the map and so i really like this ward by puppy because it's going to not only sort of reinforce the control they have over the outpost, it's going to allow them to fight in this area with really, really good vision. If you see the enemy team coming in for the outpost, you're going to have this unobstructed vision because of the outpost until they take it over. And then you're also going to have this ward as well, kind of spotting up the rest of the area that the outpost can't see. And so this gives you extremely good vision um, heading towards the 15-minute mark, which is where the bounties are going to spawn. And likely there will be some sort of fight for the bottom two sets of bounties. So here's another nice little fun spot that Puppy places a ward. I'm a huge fan of these sort of like dropping them on the other side of obstacles. Because if you don't have your camera in the perfect spot, you won't see it even if it is currently being detected by True Sight. So a ward like this is really, really nice. There used to be a spot down here. Uh, before the map was changed where there was like a tree that you could drop the ward on the other side of and it would block the ward uh, from being seen by the casual observer of the game. So this is another great ward because it gives you a little bit of high ground vision, it gives you vision of the bounty rune, and then it gives you vision of all this river as where, well where people might be moving. And it's very unlikely to get dewarded because who's going to check for a ward there? I think another really interesting thing about the current patch as far as warding goes, is that with all these new eye spots that have been placed um, into the map, a lot of them are extremely good. And so there's a reason that they get warded a lot and a reason that they get dewarded a lot because they're just such good wards. So this one is extremely good. You see it placed a lot aggressively by the team that's trying to fight into this jungle. But I actually think that placing these sort of more obvious wards as a defensive player 
as a defensive ward is even better because a lot of the time people are expecting the aggressive wards. So the other team will be expecting Secret to be trying to ward here because they want to play here most of the time. And so if you just place one here and then you maybe shift your map orientation to the other side of the map, it's going to be really easy to keep tabs on the other team invading your jungle. And maybe you'll be able to see a nice split of heroes to where you can make a play on one of the two groups. Now, this is a really nice play by Puppy. I love this. Um, they have just taken a fight in the top lane. It's going to claim a tower here. And so he's going to use this opportunity. Obviously, a Lich doesn't add a ton of damage to pushing the tower. He doesn't really need to sit here because Fnatic is not going to fight them being two heroes down for a tier one tower. They're just happy to farm in the bottom side of the map. And so Puppy is going to use this opportunity to go play some vision because he's not needed there. And the other team is probably not really keeping track of where he is since he wasn't showing very much during or after that fight. So... A lot of times people will kind of just do the bare minimum. They'll, they'll place the ward basically like just far enough into enemy territory to where it's super, super safe. And those are the types of wards that get dewarded all the time. So if you were to just walk up and place a ward on this cliff or on this high ground right here, or even on this high ground right here, these spots are going to get dewarded a ton because they're so easy to get to. So that's why I like how Puppy uses this opportunity knowing that he's safe to go very deep in enemy territory, using the distraction of his team pushing this tower, using the fact that the other team is probably not keeping tabs of where a Lich is. And so he's gonna get two wards down really, really deep behind enemy lines, knowing that his team can now play to these spots as points of conflict later on in the next minute or two. And because they're so deep, they're probably not gonna get dewarded. So it actually gives them like a six minute window to make plays to these areas of the map. So sure enough, Secret uses this vision to take a really good fight in the mid lane. All right, everyone. So right now we're just going to take a quick look around the map as a Radiant player and just kind of showcase some of the best warding spots and kind of give them some sort of classification so you guys know when those are good times to ward. Generally speaking, the first wards of the game are going to go to the mid laners and the side lane wards are sort of like a secondary need. Most people place them in pubs, but I don't think they're absolutely necessary. Placing them kind of, you know, here to play defensively, if there's a Skywrath or somebody trying to poke at your carry, can be really good. Placing one over here, maybe, if there's somebody constantly trying to wrap around behind you. One ward that I do really like to place, actually, if there's somebody trying to cut creep waves, is just putting it here. Like, the, if there's an axe that's trying to come and grab the second creep wave or something like that. This can catch them and give you the ability to chase them around and potentially kill them or stop their play from happening. Then let's go over to the top side because I think that these ones are a little bit more interesting as a position four. If you decide that you're trying to play super aggressive, I like to place a ward up in here because this gives you vision. Place a ward up in here because this gives you vision under their tower, lets you get a little bit more aggressive. You could also sneak through here after getting the bounty rune and put something like this to get the same sort of thing or another ward that is really nice these days because couriers are so slow and easy to snipe is actually getting one all the way up here and this one you generally will place after the bounty runes have been taken and maybe the the five then kind of loops around like this into the lane the carry comes across into the lane and you wait for a few seconds and then walk over here and put this one because it's going to give you a really nice vision of them doing the pull or um, maybe the carry needs to leave the lane to go heal or generally speaking the couriers will be walking through this area a lot and this is super easy to just come over here and snipe them before they get to their laners. Now imagine that this tower has fallen. This ward becomes much less valuable because there's nobody over here that you're trying to keep kind of track of their movements. And then everybody starts to kind of deward this area a lot. This warding spot, and then another one that I see placed a lot is this warding spot. Uh, people place this ward over here sometimes, or even just right here. These are all well and good, but at the same time, they don't really give you that much vision into the jungle. They, they allow you to keep track of the shrine, which is really nice, and these two camps, which is pretty important. But if we look at the sentry radius and somebody puts one just like right here, 
you're going to have this ward dewarded, this ward dewarded, and probably this one as well. So super easy to deward this jungle. And that is why you'll often see the pros try and get a little bit deeper into the jungle and drop something like over here because most people don't expect this ward because it doesn't give you direct access to the shrine with vision, but you will see people coming through to this area out of the base. So another place that people kind of default to warding to, of course, is the eye spots. And there's a reason for that. The eye spots are really, really, really good, but they also get dewarded a lot. And so I think if you were trying to take this mid tower, a lot of people will try and place this ward, but in actuality, it's probably better to kind of smoke in through here and then place a ward actually behind the tower like this. And this ward is kind of nice because it also gives you vision of this camp and it almost gives you some vision of somebody coming over here to, to farm this camp. And it just sets you up to take this fight earlier. Um, placing a little bit deeper in the lane will give you actual vision behind the tower. So that's probably the better spot right there. So on the bottom side of the map, again, this ward is really great at the beginning of the game. And then as the game starts to progress, it will start to get dewarded a lot more. Same with this ward. These are just very kind of shallow access to the jungle. And so people will just kind of expect them to be placed. And that's why we want to go a little bit deeper into the jungle, maybe place something like this. Fortunately, we don't have our nice little cliff ward there anymore. It's kind of been moved down. But this one will, you know, maybe keep track of people in the ancients, maybe keep track of somebody coming in to defend this tower. You could also go a little bit deeper in like this. This is a reasonably good ward for keeping track of people moving through this part of the map. I also really like this one because it gives you some vision towards the tier two as well as kind of rotating into this area, controlling the enemy triangle with those kind of wards. Placing this one is really nice if you're trying to take this tower, but it will probably be dewarded pretty often. And that's why this tower is pretty difficult to take just because there's not a whole lot of map control that you can get until you just get in there and start taking the tower. You could sneak around maybe and place that if you're smoked, but again, your your best bet really is just to kind of force the enemy team out of the triangle and then this tower becomes a lot more fair game. So the last thing is Roshan control and usually what I see the pros doing and what you should try to do to secure Roshan is place two to three wards in this area maybe dropping one here on your high ground if you don't have these towers up. Maybe putting one somewhere deep in the enemy jungle so you can see people rotating through and then maybe catching one from another angle. So something like this can be really nice because then if we back out, we see we kind of have this nice triangle of vision to where we have almost the entire Roshan area at least somewhat under our control. All right, so hopping over to the dire side, we're going to go over similar warding spots to the Radiant and give them the same kind of contextual usage that you would be looking for out of these wards. Uh, starting out the game, again, the ward really should go to the mid laner. I really like to smoke and put it here, to be honest, because this gives you vision of this rune, gives you vision of their high ground, gives you vision of this camp, which people like to farm a lot. I think that's really good. Smoking over here and putting it up here and counteracting the same ward that Radiant likes to place is really, really good. You can also go ahead and put this ward. It's kind of the safer version of this one on the Dire side and is pretty effective. Of course, if you want to keep track of the position four, then you want to be warding on this side. If you're feeling extra crafty and you have a Quelling Blade or are willing to use a Tango, you could smoke up here cut this tree and place this ward and that's going to give you really nice vision of this it's going to give you vision of the shrine it's going to give you vision of this camp it's going to give you a little bit of high ground vision as well this ward is insane if you can get it down as a dire player if you're on the safe lane for the dire side i tend to like to sneak into these trees before the bounty runes are being fought for and come over here and then just maybe drop a ward like this this will help me keep track of where the position four is and also give me better access to maybe coming in and harassing them from behind. It's also going to give you earlier vision of people TPing into the tower and maybe coming to reinforce the enemy offlane. 
but depending on who you're leaning against, it kind of just depends. Like if you're playing against somebody like a Pudge or a Sky that's going to be sitting in this tree line, you could just ward right here and get away with it. You could also place a ward like that, which would give you the same kind of vision, but then have more over here. As the laning stage starts to break down, um, and let's say you're able to take this tower, the Dire faces a pretty similar conundrum to the Radiant as far as invading the enemy jungle. People tend to ward here a lot aggressively. They'll ward here a lot aggressively. They'll ward here a lot aggressively. And while this is a little bit harder to deward for Radiant than it is for Dire, it's kind of the similar principle. These three spots are going to be dewarded constantly, and so it's really good to sneak in a little bit farther, maybe drop a ward like right here, or wherever is just outside of sentry range. I think that's probably pretty good, because this will give you vision of this camp, it'll give you vision of people rotating through here, and it's going to stay up a lot longer. Similarly, putting a ward like right here can do pretty well, uh, keeping an eye on this tier two tower. As you get more aggressive, you want to kind of cut in to the mid lane and try and get wards behind the mid tower. Something like that can be really good. I like this ward a lot because it gives you vision behind the tower. It also keeps track of people rotating through these different lanes. And actually this ward right here is actually quite good for Radiant. This is something I didn't cover on the Radiant side, but if you are in Radiant and you are losing, and the enemy team is just playing in your jungle constantly, putting this ward can be really good because they're going to try and squeeze in from this side a lot of the time and take over your triangle. So if you can see them coming from this direction or even just putting a ward here and then you can just defend this high ground as the Radiant. The Radiant Triangle is maybe a little bit easier to get vision down than the Dire Triangle because there's a little bit more kind of options. Again, this ward can be really good as you're trying to get more aggressive onto their side of the map. You want to generally avoid this unless you're planning to take a fight right around here or maybe going for Roche, because this will get dewarded consistently throughout the entire game. A slightly better ward might be something like this, because this one will not get caught by a sentry, but will also catch people behind the tier two. You could do kind of a similar thing, maybe over like right here. These kinds of things are going to give you maybe longer lasting vision, but not quite as good vision as this eye spot. And then in kind of a similar fashion to the Radiant, if you are behind and you're trying to play defensive, I think that these eye spots become a little bit more valuable because they give you a really, really big vision advantage to play around. And a lot of times they protect areas of the map that are extremely important to protect. So let's say you're super behind, the enemy has your whole jungle, and all you have is your triangle. If you can just kind of keep these two wards up with sentries to spot anybody invis coming through, then you can actually come back into a game just by controlling your high ground triangle a lot of the time, um, making sure that you're dewarding, you know, the areas that they might try and sneak in. But if you can just sort of keep like a just a defensive perimeter around a small part of the map that you need to control, these eye spots offer pretty good spots to kind of build your fortifications of vision. So I hope you enjoyed this video. It's sort of like the vision meta of the current patch, and that is why it is the meta report. We did an in-depth discovery. We looked at Puppy, one of the best warders in the entire game, and we looked at some of the best warding spots that will give you an advantage when you are trying to take over the map and win games of Dota. So thank you for tuning in. Let me know what you thought of the video again in the comment section below. We Really appreciate your support, and we will see you in another video very soon.